Ali Wrestling returns to pay-per-view for the first time since February's Revolution event. With double o nothing on Saturday night, the car up bring the tense angry action AEW fans expect while continuing the one of AEW shows held without fans in attendance during the coronavirus pan- pandemic. Ada will look to take advantage of the situation with one of the featured matches on the show, a stadium stampede match with Matt Hardy and the Elite, taking on the inner circle inside an empty TIAA bank field. In addition, there will be three time matches on the card with John Mosley defending his tie against Dark Order leader Bo- Mr. Bodhi Lee. Cody and Lance Archer competing to become the inaugural TNT champion, and Nala was paying, um, Nala was putting her women's championship against Wei Hot Haku. Oh Lord, I'm not pronouncing her name wrong. Hakua Saida. In a mass void of disqualifications or countouts, Double Nothing will begin at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, with the show expected to last anywhere from three plus hours. Not cutting the the back end pre show, which starts one hour prior to the main call of seven o'clock p.m. Um, before I get this on the way, on Wednesday's edition of AEW, Dallow Might was was an injury laden one. Not something the companies were looking for heading into the double or nothing pay per view this Saturday. Mark, making their first appearance since March due to the pandemic, the Young Bucks returned at the end of the show in a brawl featuring the Elite vs. the Inner Circle. However, Matt Jackson may have, may, have, may have injured his ribs on his left side, either breaking or torn, cal- torn cartilage or a bad bruise or on a dive he and Brother Nick did from the stands. He was active in the brawl and was even taking chair shots and knees to his wheels, only visible showing pain just before the show went off air. He is scheduled to be in Silas Elite with his inner circle stadium stampede match. Britt Baker looked to have seriously injured her right knee in a tag match with Nala Rose, Chris Stentlider, and Hakua Saida. Baker was sitting in the corner when Stanliner and Saida slammed Rose on her right knee. Baker immediately grabbed her knee and and sin and came, and continued to work for a few spots afterwards. Kelly unable to put any weight on it. Rose dragged her to the corner and tagged herself in, allowing the AEW doctors to check on Baker. She is scheduled to face that ladder in a singles match this Saturday. Finally, Phoenix appeared to be injured, following a big dive spot onto the the competitor's first side of the casino land match, landing hard on his back and hip on the outside of the wing. Um, let's talk about the buy in show. It will be Party Party facing best friends to determine a no contender for the AEW World Tag Team Championship, currently held, held by Handman Page and Kenny Omega. This match promised to be one of the most fast-paced of the evening and will be a great way to kick off the show. Recently, best friends have been somewhat overshadowed by their friend Orange Cassidy, who has a bit, or who has a habit of unintentionally stealing the spotlight every time. While best friends are the veterans, and while Pi Pi have been rising up on the wings. In the tag division, 
have been close to the goals in the past. I'm going with best friends. Best friends have been defeating a lot of tag teams since um, the Dark Order having a wife, and they were ranked number one. The um, best friend had to be had to feed Kaomek and Mako Nakasawa, um, Jimmy Havoc and Kip Sivian. We seem to feed the rest of Express, Mark, um, not Mark, um, Jungle Boy and Lucasaurus. So they're on a win streak. While Papa had been facing a lot of local jobbers, and they will be facing Boogeyman and Tay Bear on a being elite edition. I'm going with best friends. They are putting the work and they've been on high uh, winning streak. I hope best friends become the tag team champion sooner rather than later. Okay, a next up, Brett Baker business Chris Stanladder. AEW's resident Walmart, Dr. Brett Baker has set her sights on Chris Stanladder. Refusing to release her from the lock jar on May 13th of Dynamite after the women's four way match. But Chris already holds a brief, painful victory over Brick over after the two face off back in December in a no one match for the AEW Women's Championship. Still, Baker is the wild star of AEW Women's Division right now, and if she can defeat Stanley. Attempts to certainly be next for her. So my petition is Brett Baker. Um, next up, Nala Rose versus Akua Sa oh, no. Akua Saida for the AEW Women's Championship in a no disqualification and no count out match. Having won the women's championship at Rift Lewis and Nala Wars has been dominating the division. But her cool side has plenty of impressive wins under her belt so far in AEW, including recently defeating Dr. Britt Baker, Chris, Chris Stantlider, and Penelope, 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 oh goodness, Penelope Ford in a four ways match. But thanks to Wolves attack a seal with a candlestick on last week's Dynamite. This will be a, a no disqualification match, mean the ruthless woes shall have an even bigger advantage. And hope I'm pulling for Kaku, well, say, uh, to win the match, dethroning Nala Woes. Next up, Jungle Boy vs. MJF. Having recovered from his hangnail injury. Really, MJF is set to take on Jurassic Express Jungle Boy. These are the two of AEW's top young talents and are completely opposite ends of the spectrum with MJF the diabolical heel and Jungle Boy the lovable babyface. If MJF, if MJF, who will no doubt be accompanied by Warlord, is able to pick up the win here, it won't be a clean victory. So my pick is unfortunately MJF winning, but I'm still pulling for Jugger Boy to score a bigger upset. Now, think of this as AEW version of Money in the Bank, but instead of a bracket, it's a casino chip. The match will start with two wrestlers in the wing, with a new participant being added every nine seconds until all nine wrestlers have entered. But because the chip will, can be retrieved at any time. The order of entrance here really matters. The winner will get a free shot at the AEW's World Championship. Um, this feels like a match to create a container for a short tower program to play out on Dynamite. Wayfair is one of the best wrestlers on the planet, and the win here puts him in line to take on Mosley or Lee in a bar burner timeout on television. The mystery could the mystery compared to could change things in a big way, but we don't know who that is. I'm leaning toward Scorpio Sky, as some of the other best choices for the match have had big single more. But I feel like Scorpio Sky is might go win the last match because I see him getting pushed 
like the way they promote him on TV. I I think Scorpio Sky is gonna be the one to win. I guess like make him the breakout star of AEW out of the SCU. And we'll lose his Scorpio Sky win the AEW World Champion while Crystal Daniel and Freaky Kassan hold the AEW Tag Team Champions. And also, Kassan is also in the land match. So I just hope that they don't create tension between SCU. I hope they don't not lead to bring up SCU. I see by face of Scorpio Sky. Okay, next match is the inner circle versus okay. There's the inner circle versus um the elite and Matt Hardy and then Stam Stampede match. Since losing the world championship, Chris Jericho has been consumed by the rival of Matt Hardy and AEW who de who debuted who debuted on March 18th. Not content with being Hardy and Omega in a street fight on the May 6th edition of Dynamite. A week after, or a week later, Jericho tells the lead to take the view to inside the empty TIAA Bank Field Stadium. This match promised to be something totally unique, perhaps reminiscent, uh, reminiscent, reminiscent of Mankind and the Rock's brutal halftime heat encounter in 1999. With a whole stadium to work with, we can all wonder what side spots these 10 men will be able to come up with. The ridiculousness of a stay on stampede plays right into Hardy's wheelhouse, and that this I give his team a slight edge. The mess up be pure madness, but madness is in a way that is built for the broken one. There's no suck in any result here, but there have been plenty of good balls between the competitors in the match, so expect play, plenty of wild action. Ultimately, Hardy will have something up his sleeve to put over the win for his squad, so I pick my heart in the lead. And this will make a break for Elite. If the Elite doesn't win, I think I'll tear the group apart. This is my opinion. And what about that? And I get to, um. I get the. Oh. Goodness, this lot match for AEW. Okay. Man. Okay, for Cody Business, let's also for the T TNT Championship. Okay, this is a 50-50 booking in my opinion, but I'm going with Cody. Cody started to take the towel here for the reasons they not to mention wrestling on TNT. And the history that goes along with that. So while that will normally have me lean toward um, Archer, I also realize that Cody has won nothing next to nothing this far in AEW SSI. From being his older own brother, he not only lost the AEW World Time match and gave up an opportunity to, to contend for it, but also fell victim to in a feud with MJF. A company cannot have its top favorites be this much of a loser unless they are already planning to turn Cody, which is certainly possible. More likely to me is that Cody takes out his frustration on Arthur and beats him on to drop the title in a quick fashion. So I pick Cody to win the title. The main event. D Ambos versus Blue Copper. Which and my bad these are better names than John Mars and Buddha Lee. Um looks, it's a little strange to see Lee Vout um valued a tower set on hey, on the most popping show of the year so soon upon his arrival. So D Ambos retains the title. Hopefully they figure out a quick way to make Lee look strong and unsuccessfully tasking for the top part and all elite wrestling.